right what is going on everyone today we are working on lead code number 120 it's called triangle this is a very good problem to get a good understanding of how dynamic programming works it uses a method called tabulation and it, it's it's uh, it's a good way to kind of understand how to approach these types of problems when they come around and it's very common you'll see these on a lot of different types of interviews and a lot of other problems uh, take advantage of this pattern so it's definitely good to know so we can take a look at the prompt here given a triangle array return the minimum path sum from top to bottom for each step you may move to an adjacent number of the row below more formally if you are on index i on the current row you may move to either index i or i plus one on the next row okay so we have a triangle uh, in a 2d array and it's have, it has two, three, four, six, five, seven, four, one, eight, three, and we can see here that the minimum path is from two to three to five to one, and that's going to equal eleven. So one thing we have to understand is we do have to calculate all the paths to this problem, and then from that we can figure out what is the the minimum one um, at the end. So again, this is. This is using uh, uh, taking advantage of a, a method called tabulation. So the way we want to think about this is we want to create a table, and we want to have in that table some initial values that allow us to calculate all the values in the rest of the table. So here we have a triangle, a 2D array, okay, and um, it is filled with a 2, uh, a 3, and a four, and then a six, five, seven. So we have six, five, and seven, and then a four, one, eight, three. So what I'm gonna actually do is, let's just do this on the side. Okay, so we're gonna have a triangle with a two, a three, and a four, six, five, and seven, six, five, and seven, and then we have four, one, eight, three. So we have four, one, one, eight, and three. Okay, and this is set up as a 2D array. Throw those brackets there. And that. And now what we want to do is find the minimum path. So we got to find the sum of all these paths. We got to basically traverse down this triangle and figure out how do we get to the minimum path. And there's two ways that you can move. So if we look here, this two can either go here and there. This three, we can have a path there and there. Or this four, we can have a path there and there to the five and seven. Likewise, to the six, we can have a path to the one or the four or the one. This five can have a path to the one or the eight. And this seven can have a path to the eight or the three. Okay, so those are all the different paths we can go. And we want to get the sum of all these, store them down here at the bottom, and then just take the minimum of that. So what if we create a table, right? We create a table that is, a, that is the same size as our input table. So we're gonna have a two, and we just put in that initial value there. The rest of it we can leave blank because we're gonna use that two to fill out all the rest of the values in this table and see if we can get the minimum here at the bottom, okay? And so what we can do <clears throat> is we can reference our input table here. So here we can say, okay, we have a two and we have two choices. Okay, we gotta fill in the first one and the second element of that, of the second row. And so what we wanna do is uh, just get the sum. You know, we can take the sum two plus three, which is uh, five, and then three, um, two plus four, which is six. Okay, so now we have that first row filled. We're gonna go into the second row, and again, we just wanna get the sum, so we can do five plus six, which is going to be, we have two options for this five. We have a, a one to the left and one to the right, so we can do five plus six, which is going to be 11. And then here we have, uh, um, yeah, we have two choices, okay? 
So when we get to this 5, we can see that we have two choices. We can either, we can either calculate this middle value here uh, from whatever this current 5 is right here, and it can either be plus 6 or plus 5. Well, we want the minimum, so we want to do 5 plus 5. So we're going to take that minimum value, and we'll set this to 10. Okay, because we can, we can come here from the 6, or we can come here from the 5. We're going to choose the one from the 5 because we want the minimum. Similarly, um, for, for our last element here, there's only one choice, right? So this 7 can only uh, come from the 6. So we're going to do 7 plus 6, which is 13. Okay. Now we're going to come down to our bottom row, and we take a look here. And so what are our choices to get to, to this element right over here? Okay, well, we can just come down from the 11. Okay, so we can do 11 plus 4, which is uh, 15. Now, for this element right here, where our 1 currently is, there's two ways to get here, either from the 11 or the 10. And we want the minimum. Okay, so we're going to come down here from the 10, and we're going to set that to 11. Okay, similarly, for this 8 right here, this is what we're on which is right over here. There's two ways to come down here. We can either come down here from the 10 or the 13. Well, we want the minimum, so we're going to come down here from the 10. So this will be uh, 18. And then lastly, from, uh, from this element right there, there's only one way we can come down there, and that's from the 13. So we're going to do 7 plus 13. 7, 8, 9, 10, so that's 20. Okay, so now we have our final row here, right over here, and we just take the minimum of that, which is going to be 11. And if we look here, that is our correct answer. It's 11. Okay, so it's not too bad. I know, I know it can be a little tricky when you first see these types of problems, but it's good to kind of write these out step by step to give you a good understanding. And then once you get the logic, it's, uh, you know, it's just a matter of coding it up. So let's go ahead and do that. And what we want to do here is uh, first we want to go ahead and create our table. And I'll just set it to an empty array. Okay, and now we want to fill in this table um, based off of the size of the triangle. Okay, so we can just do a for loop. So for let row of triangle and then what we want to do is table dot push and we just want to put in uh, an array of the size of that row so we can just do new array uh, row dot length and we'll just fill it with a zero okay so all we're doing here is we're just creating this table that's uh, this this mirror image. We're just mapping this table, but we're filling all the values in with zero. So it's just a two D array of this size, but just with all the values set to zero. Now what we want to do is we want to set that first element to the element that's in the table. Okay, so we want to manually set that first element. So we can do table at index uh, zero is going to equal triangle at index 0. Okay, so we set that to. Now we want to iterate over over our table for let row equal 1. Row is less than table dot length. Row plus plus. Okay, and now we want to uh, iterate over the columns. So we can do for let column equal 0 column is less than table of row dot length column plus plus all right now now that we've got here there's three three different choices okay so remember how how we calculated these we have to look at are we at the are we at the beginning of the row or so are we at the first column or at the last column if we're at the first column, so let's say we're looking at this right here, we're at the first element or the first column, 
or so the first element of this row, there's only one choice. There's only one choice, okay? So we got to make sure that if we're at the beginning or at the end, there's only going to be one choice. And so if we're at either one of those two, we want to we want to have a um, a separate condition for that. If we're at the beginning, then we want to just go ahead and add whatever this value is from the previous row and add it to the current value and and move forward. If we're in the middle, we're going to have two choices and we got to get the minimum of that. So we got to go back one row and get the value of whatever the the column is on the previous row, the two choices that we have and then set that minimum of those two choices plus whatever's in this current cell and uh, uh, add that to the new new value okay same thing if we're at the last last element uh, the last row then we want to get the previous um, the previous row the previous column and we want to go ahead and add that into there okay this will make a lot more sense uh, once I code it out so we can say uh, if if we are at the first column then what we want to do is if column equals zero okay then what we want to do is we want to set table of row column to whatever's whatever's our previous row so we want to do um, table of row minus one column plus triangle of our current row column all right, so what we're doing here is if we are at this, if J is here or if our column is right here, then we're going to go to the previous row and we're going to get this element right there and add it to whatever's in our triangle uh, for this for that row. OK, so we're going to do row minus one uh, column plus triangle row column. OK, else if column is equal to and what we are doing here is is if we are in the last element so we can do table of uh, row column dot length minus one okay so if we're in the if we're in the current row and we are on the last element that last column then we want to go ahead and have a condition for that Okay, and this is going to be table of row column and this is where this is where this can get a little tricky okay because it's not that it's hard it's just that you have to really really think through each element because now we want to get the last element of the last table and it can get a little confusing okay so what we want to do here is we want to do table of row minus one Okay, and then we want to do table of row minus one column, okay, plus triangle of row and column. Okay, and then else what we want to do is we want to set our table of row column is going to equal the minimum of table of row minus one column or table of row minus one column minus one plus triangle of row and column. Okay. It can get a little hairy when you get to these types of things. I think it's important if when you do get to these to really think through each element of what you're writing. It's not necessarily complicated conceptually to understand what you're doing, but sometimes in the code you can get lost in that. So, And now what we want to do is just get the minimum of our last row. So we have tabulated all these values here um, by going down, and now we just want to get the minimum of that last row in our table. Just want to return math.min dot table of table dot length minus one okay and that should do it 
so we do have a small bug here. Um, I'm sure you guys have found it, but if you look here on line 16, you can see that we have table um, of row minus one, table of row minus one column, and in fact, what we want here is table of row minus one dot length minus one. Okay. So this, this is a very, this is not a hard problem, but these types of bugs are very easy to get in here, especially in these dynamic programming problems. Um, it's very easy to fall into these types of traps. So when you do encounter problems like this, just make sure to really, really understand line by line what it is exactly that you're doing. Because uh, it's just very, very hard uh, to get through these without without small bugs and it's probably why interviewers love asking or companies love asking these types of questions because it really tests how much how much attention you're paying to um, to the detail so that is uh, leak code number 120 I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one